Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, we serve a wonderful God. He's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Come on, let's enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. Let's be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. How many people know that the Lord is good? Thank you. 
excited about the fact that we're, we're headed towards Resurrection Sunday, one of the most powerful days uh, in our Christian lives, uh, the most important day in our Christian lives. I just want to say something. I finished getting my uh, vac vaccines or vaccinations, and uh, I just want everyone, because there's a lot of talk going around, I just want everyone to read up for yourself on about these vaccinations. Don't let anybody convince you that it's a setup and that it's gonna track you because they track you anyway, wherever you are. And for me personally, I just wanna share this with you today. For me personally, when I was growing up, if you rolled it up, I didn't know what was in it, I smoked it. If it was in a bottle, I drank it. I got vaccines before I was a, when I was a kid, and I'm, I'm still got part of my right mind. So I'm just saying to you, don't let somebody come to you and tell you what not to do. Do your own research, talk to God, and make a decision for yourself. Just thank God for those of you that's been working with the food drives, food giveaways, and we're going to continue to do that. And we're going to come right back with our minister of music right now. I thank God for him. I just want to say this too. God has blessed the Aldrich family. Sister Lan and I have another granddaughter named Jewel Aldrich, a man that was born a couple of days ago. We growing, so don't hate on us. We just gonna grow, we gonna multiply, and we gonna take over. <laughs> I said the pastor did. I said they like baby they kids. They don't, they don't die. They multiply. <laughs> Look at everyone put those hands together. Is anybody grateful and thankful? Of all that the Lord has done for us. Come on, look at the hands right here. Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases, people are slipping away. Economy's down, people can't get enough pay.
Bibles or your apps um, on Romans chapter 8. I'm going to teach a little bit this morning. And I thank God for all of you streaming. I love you and I'm praying for you. And I hope that you pray for me. And I hope that you're praying right now and you let go of all of the distractions and everything around you. We're headed towards Palm Sunday. And again, like I said, Resurrection Sunday. So this is a time that we need we need, really need to be serious and think about what Christ has done for us and what God has done for us through Jesus Christ. The scripture says in Romans 8, 16 through 18, that the spirit himself testifies with our spirit. Listen to what he says. This is Paul talking. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. Now, if we are children of God, then we are heirs, heirs of God, and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, 
in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider the sufferings and our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that is revealed in us. Amen. I want, I want to talk about designed just for me. Designed just for me. Father God, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for your people, this, your people here in our presence. We thank you for Minister JCT and the music ministry and everybody that helps to make these services continue to go and grow. We thank for you for those that are live streaming in today and that continue to pray for us and continue to sow into this ministry. We ask that this word would help to heal the sick, to cast out the demons, to lift up, bow down heads, and to give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And we say thank you. Amen. Amen. Don't forget don't, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget to send your tithes in. I know some of you got your stimulus checks. I've been checking on you. I, I, I know who got them. I already know who got them. So don't forget to send your stimulus package to God. Amen. Amen. I know who got them. And you owe God 10%. <laughs> One of the things that makes us strong as believers is the fact that we all have to agree that we are survivors. Your survival is a result of going through tough situations knowing that the word of God in your life has given you the power to overcome whatever you're going through. The word of God is organic, it's Alive, it's a living word, it's real, it's not some historical document, but the word of God breathes, it breathes upon our situation. The word of God moves us from our right now into our not yet. When you have the word of God in your life, even while you're going through painful situations, God's word will increase your prayer life. God's word will sharpen your values and it will make us wiser and help us to be stronger. Simply because of the things that have been designed in our lives. There are some people that are here today that need to understand that there's glory while you're going through. Don't ever allow the enemy to convince you that you are always going to be in the situation that you're in right now. Trouble don't last always. You have to understand that God will reward your faithfulness and your perseverance. That serving the Lord will pay off after a while. It does not matter what people say about you, but what matters is how the Lord views you in the midst of your situation. The reality is that there is glory while you are in your struggles, and then there's glory after your struggles. There's there is an after this. There is an after this. And you need to understand that no matter how rough it may get, you got to hold on. No matter how the storm has been going in your life, hold on. No matter how you're being stressed in your faith, this is the season you have to hold on. Because there's glory after this. So in Romans chapter 8, we find Paul encouraging the believers in, in Rome. Rome was a very advanced civilization. Paul is preaching to them about a transition that they, would, they were going to experience. And Paul is speaking the, to them on two levels. One level is telling them, stop being so attached to all the things that you have accumulated in this world. Because you've missed the spiritual principle of the fact that it's not what money can buy who makes you, but it's what money cannot buy. Even though I realize that I'm in transition and this is not my home, even though I'm passing through here and, and I'm on my way to glory, I have to realize the pain that I must experience on this side of life. So in chapter 8, verses 1, Paul makes a declaration that there is no condemnation for those who are, who are in Jesus Christ. That I'm a new person. 
and that I'm in a new season. It is in Romans chapter 8 that Paul also reminds us that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord that have been called according to his purpose. So what Paul is telling us that we must put pain in perspective, that after my pain down here, that we're on our way to glory in heaven. But what Paul is also telling us is that after my pain down here, there's glory down here too. So Paul begins in verse 16 to zone in on this particular principle that the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Somebody say that the spirit says I'm a child of God. Come on, I want you to be clear about that. I want you to say that the Spirit says that I'm a child of God. Okay. Now, one of the most important things you and I can ever do is be in tune with what the Spirit is saying about us. Sometimes we get so caught up in what pe other people are saying about us, we miss what the Spirit of God says about us. So in verse 16, the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. It signifies a sense of identity. So I must understand that I'm a child of God, which means that I'm going to make some mistakes. Like all children, we all go through what's called a maturation process to, to mature into adults. There's a cycle. We, we're born and we're just like infants. We cry and whine sometimes all night long. When we get tired, we will whine. When we're not feeling good, we will keep you up all night long, whining and crying. That's what babies do. And all of us have seasons in our lives where we just whine, kick, scream because we're spiritual babies. Then we go into adolescence. And adolescence is when you think that you're grown, but you're not. Adolescence is when you start smelling yourself and thinking that you're all that. And you don't want to obey any rules. You don't want anybody telling you what to do. You think you know everything when you really don't know anything. But, and because when you are an adolescent, you start drawing the line. This is mine. You start thinking about me, 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 and not we, we, we. And let's not trip about it. All of us have been in that space in our lives where it's all about us. You've been in that place where you've been radical, you've been rebellious, you were out of the box. And I know that some of you act like you've never been there before, but if there was a rule, you broke it. If there was something to drink, you drunk it. If there was something to smoke, you smoke it. If there was something to sleep with, you slept with it. Oh, come on now, come on now. But, but, but then we began to grow up and we became mature. And we look back over our lives and reflect, we re reflected on the mistakes that we had made. And we came to the conclusion that when I was a child, yeah. I thought as a child, I understood as a child. But now that I'm a man, now that I'm a woman, I put away childish things. So what is important is that the church, and the church is you and I. The church is the body of believers. The church, we have to give people the space to go through the maturation process without judging them for where they are in their cycle of life. Because we all don't mature at the same time or at the same rate. But I always remember, some of us think we're so religious that we expect everybody to be born with a full set of teeth, head full of hair, and can speak two languages as soon as we come out of our mamas. That's how some of us think. But the reality is we all have to grow and mature. All of us should be on a journey. And this journey is to get us to the right place in God. Yet all of us have issues. We all have setbacks. But we can testify that through everything that we've been through, we've got a loving father. You know, we're children of God. When you, when you experience challenges in your life, never forget that you've got a loving father that loves you. And if you practice leaning not to your own understanding and you acknowledge him, he will direct your path. 
I belong to God and God has my back. Would you say that with me? I belong to God and God's got my back. That's good to know today, isn't it? See, no matter what situation that I find myself in, God covers me. He provides for me. He protects me. He takes care of me. People look at you and they, they wonder how you've survived some of the things that you've survived. And you tell them, because I got a daddy that knows how to step in right on time. And he's always takes care of me. So if people don't like you, if people are hating on you, if people don't want to be bothered with you, you tell them, I got a father that loves me. The spirit of the Lord testifies that I'm a child of God. Somebody said, I'm a child of God. So if I'm a child of God, then I have to be strategically connected to growing. Because the first byproduct of me being a child of God is growth. Look at verse 17. The Bible says that if you're a child of God, then you are an heir, heir, and then you are a joint heir or a co-heir with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. Now I want you to see this. It's, it's impossible to say that you're connected to God and not be progressive and growing in this season. I hope you heard me. You cannot say that you're connected to God if you're not being progressive and growing even in this season. That's why you can tell whether a person has a serious relationship with God. Because they become irritated, agitated, and nauseated about trifling people. People that are progressive are always drawn to that which is progressive. That's why people who love God can't date or marry somebody who does not. Because they will end up spending all their time trying to figure out where the relationship is going. Because the relationship is progressive and stagnant if both people love God. The text says, I'm an heir. He literally says that there's favor upon my life. Somebody say favor. favor. There are things that God does in my life because of the relationship I have with him. The sex says that we're heirs of God and co-heirs with Jesus, which suggests that I have access to stuff other people don't have access to. A heir is a benefactor. The Greek word for heir is pleromo, one who receives an inheritance by right of sonship. Once, once somebody dies, the children get the inheritance. Now here's the favor of God. God sent his son, Jesus Christ. He died on the cross and my sins were wiped away. As a result, I became a benefactor of salvation. If that does not make you shout, I don't know what will. I didn't deserve it, but his death gave me unmerited favor. It's not just limited to salvation for my soul, but it also gives me provisions for my needs and healing for my body. And that's why I refuse to break covenant with him. Because when I'm going through, I have to recognize and understand how I got into the family of God. So pastor, so pastor, if I'm, if I'm a child of God, you need to explain to me how I got into the family. Oh, I couldn't wait to get here today to tell you how you got in the family. When your mama brought you into the world, you, you were born with a, don't let me scare you with this. When your mama brought you in the world, you were born with a sexually transmitted disease called life. You were born into sin. No matter whether you think you were born speaking in tongues and playing the tambourine, you were born into sin. Paul says in Ephesians 2, 2 1 through 3, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you follow the ways of the world and, of, and the, of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. The kingdom of the air is the devil, which means that at one time the devil was your daddy. I hope you get that. Remember that. See, that's why none of us have any room to judge somebody else when we see them acting a fool. Because you can see some of them in you years, some years ago. Don't walk around with amnesia like you've never done nothing. 
Because when you see them, you say to yourself, that used to be me. I was naughty by nature. <laughs> Verse 3 says, all of us lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. By nature, we were children of wrath. So the question is, if I was born into sin and the devil was my daddy and he was telling me what to do, how did I get into the family of God? You got in through the adoption process. Romans 8 and 15 says, For you did not receive the spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship or adoption, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. Abba means Daddy. Based on the fact that I've been adopted, I can cry, Daddy. I recognize that many of you have concerns about the word adoption, adoption because of the stigma that comes with it. So let me try to help you understand adoption. Paul was very specific about terminology here because this terminology is significant because of the way the Romans understood adoption is different than the way we understand adoption. Because in Paul's day, in Roman culture, when a child was adopted, that meant that, that, that some children that the Romans adopted had more privileges than children that were born into their families. Roman law said a father had absolute rule over his children. Wish we had some laws like that today. So what a father was, when a father was disappointed with his child's skills or his child's behavior or how his child was acting, he could go out and find a child and bring that child into the family. And that child would go through a legal process called adoption. And three things would happen. The first thing would happen is that that child would be removed from every social and every natural family relationship that existed prior to him coming into his new family. Secondly, that child would be placed permanently in the new family. Thirdly, all previous debts and all previous obligations that that, that child had would be dissolved. If the child owed somebody something, anything, the child owed somebody anything, that debt would be taken care of. So let me tell you what God did for you and I. God told the devil, I know they've been living for you, but when I sent my son Jesus Christ to the cross and he said, it is finished, I permanently adopted them, you back into the family. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody ought to thank the Lord today. So God says, devil, I take back every legal right you have over them. You don't have any papers on them anymore because they've been adopted. And you cannot unsun them or undollar them. And thoroughly, whatever they've done in their past, I have totally wiped the slate clean. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste for glory divine. I'm a heir of salvation. Purchased by God, born in the spirit, I've been washed in his blood. This is my story. Tell somebody I've been adopted. I don't care if you don't want me because I got a daddy that wants me. You don't have to be in my club. You don't have, I don't have to be in your club. I don't have to be in your clique. You don't even have to invite me to your party. I got a daddy that loves me. I've been adopted. That's why Paul says that I'm never going to lose fellowship with him. That word fellowship is a Greek word, konania. I'm not breaking this fellowship because that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to take you through enough stuff that you turn your back on your daddy. You remember the prodigal son? He had a loving father, but he, didn't, but he didn't know what he had. He thought the grass was greener on the other side of the fence. And maybe it was because of all the fertilizer. And some of you are knee deep in fertilizer right now because you don't know who your daddy is. But I come to tell you, it's not too late to come back home. Paul says, I'll neither let height or depths or powers or principalities 
nothing will separate me from the love of God. So I'm going to grow because I know who I am. So Paul concludes the matter by saying this, that the sufferings cannot compare to the glory. Paul says, I consider, I, I suspect that what I'm going through can't compare to the glory which shall be revealed. Paul talks about fortitude right now. When I realize that God has something better for my life, I maintain my fortitude because this is not the season to fold, to quit or to give up under pressure. This is the season to buckle down and pull yourself together and declare that I'm going to press through and see what's on the other side of this. Can I have a few more minutes just to try to stretch your theology this morning? I want us to learn how to think through our faith. Tell yourself, I need to think through my faith. Paul says something in verse 19. Now, this is one of these scriptures that is tucked away. Paul says in verse 19, the creation, the creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. The eager expectation, the eager expectation. So I begin to think the only reason that God has allowed this world to continue is that God wants you and I to be adopted. Remember to think about that. God has no other reason to keep this world going on other than to give you and I an opportunity to get ourselves together and love him like he loves us. See, there are many of us that hold this idea that somehow the planet can be saved. And I'm not hating on that. I believe in recycling. I believe we ought to be that kind of planet. I'm, I'm not a hater on secular environmentalists. I'm with you. Let's treat our planet right. But I need you to understand the natural world that we're living in, that we're trying to live in today, was ruined the day that Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. The day that Adam and Eve failed in Genesis 3, the Bible says that God cursed this earth. So this natural world is subject to bondage and corruption. So evolution states that the world's going from disorder to order. That's what evolution says. But if you look at the world we live in, it's actually going in the opposite direction. The natural world, this, the natural world right now is in bondage of corruption. There's a fundamental law called entropy, a tendency of energy system to run down. It's the second law of thermodynamics. I'm getting a little educated on you this morning. It suggests that there's a transfer of energy that there's a loss in the amount of usable energy and an increase in the amount of unusable energy. In other words, everything is going from order to disorder. Everything is growing older and wearing out. Okay, let me bring it there. Let me, get to, let me not even be heaven. Even you and I. Paul is speaking to Rome who was very advanced in medicine, philosophy, and literature. They were very proud, pious, and pumped up people. And Paul was trying to tell them, out of all these things that you pat yourself on the back for, these things are passing away. So he says you have to really take a look at yourself. You don't think that you're growing older and wearing out? But let's be clear. There's a reason why. When you go to the grocery store, or to the pharmacy, or to every hair care store, the reason why Mr. and Ms. Clairol have never fell out and gotten a divorce, the reason why so many men have bald heads is that it's not just the style, we're all getting older. When you get older, your hairline begins to recede. <laughs> Women, when you get older, your hair begins to fall out. So we thank God for weave today. The reason why they're selling so many spandex these days is because we all get a little older. You know there used to be a time you would just get up out of bed and go. Now you have to sit up and have a word of prayer and think about it and then slowly get up out of bed. You know, I used to get up and be gone all day long, but now I'm getting a little older. About 5 o'clock, I'm making my way home to get in my chair, and that's it for the day. I've learned how to get somewhere and sit down now. Have I got any witnesses? I don't 
care what you accumulate on this side of life. The devil wants you to believe that your value is based on the things your money can buy, your cars, your toys, your houses. So then you become attached and loved with things that are terminal and temporary. But Job reminds us, naked I came in this world and naked I'm going to leave. All the stuff that you're attached to, you better have, so you better learn how to hold on to something that's eternal. Because what does it profit a man or a woman to gain the whole world and lose his soul? You're trying to hang on to things that are passing away and you let things go that are eternal. Listen to what the prophet Isaiah says in Isaiah 51 and 6. Lift up your eyes to the heavens. He says, look at the earth beneath you. The heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment. And those of us that live here will die like flies. But my salvation, my soul will last forever. My righteousness will never fail. He says, I recognize that I need to build my hope on things eternal. And I'm holding to God's unchanging hand. So I close with this. We understand pain like this. At a funeral when somebody dies, we'll say, well, they don't have to suffer no more because there's no more pain and no more suffering. And we come to the conclusion that they're with the Lord now, that they're in glory. We've accepted the fact that in this life down here on earth, that they're suffering. We've accepted the fact but we've also embraced the hope that when we leave here, that there's glory that's there in heaven. And that means that there's actually no more pain and no more haters and no more sickness and no more prescriptions. So we got that down. Paul says you, you, you can understand that. But Paul says, can you put that into your modern day situation? Can you put that into your right now? And recognize that you're going to have pain in this life down here on earth. But your pain is a prelude to the glory that God's going to take you to. Not just in heaven either, but right here on earth. Because even though we've had some rough days down here on earth, we've had some great days down here on earth. And even in this last year, we've had some falls, but we've had some get back up times. We have had some glory. Hasn't been as bad as most folks try to make it to be. Because God, our daddy, has been watching over us. So what you need to remember is that God is going to elevate you during your pain. And if you don't have any pain, then you ought to be nervous because your pain is a prelude to your promotion. After this, there is glory. The definition of the word glory is a Greek word doxa which means something good that happens. Splendor, blessings, brightness, and an exalted state. This is the best way I know how to say it. Everybody wants glory, but nobody wants pain. See, I got a little workout regimen that I've had going on, and so I go down to the YMCA and I swim laps every morning for 45 minutes to an hour in the big pool, five days a week. So I've been reading about swimming and workouts, and if I want to get in shape and lose weight, then I have to push myself past the point of being com comfortable while I'm working out. I have to push myself past the point of pain. Some mornings I don't feel like getting up and I lay in the bed thinking of excuses not to go swim and not to work. It's cold outside. Oh, my big toe feeling a little funny this morning. You know, I just come up with all kinds of excuses. Some mornings I want to quit. But I get dressed up and I go down to the pool and I jump in. And I realize that once I jump in, I'm either going to sink or swim. But do you know why I do it? Because every now and then when I'm looking in the mirror or I step on the scales and I realize that I can see my toes without bending over. I, I, and I'll see a sign of my Dunlap disease going away. And some of you don't know what Dunlap disease is, but Dunlap disease is when your stomach done lapped over your belt. So when I see a little progress and I'm feeling a little better, I'm like, yeah, yeah, Lord. Because every, 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 even though I have to go through the pain, the glory outweighs the pain. 
Some of you have been up all night studying, burning the midnight oil. You're in college, and I know you're tired and of studying. I, I know you're tired of social distancing. I know you want to get out and party and kick it. But you keep on studying because when you graduate, it becomes glory. Am I talking to anybody here today? Can you move to the next tax bracket? Some of you are trying to lose weight, and the diet is killing you. The more you die, the harder it gets. And you start asking God, is there a shrimp for a brother? Is there a piece of fish for a sister? Lord, can I just sneak a piece of candy or sneak a piece of gum? But, but you got to understand that if you keep being disciplined, then the glory is going to come and your healing is going to come. And that's when miracles come. And that's when your breakthrough comes. I'm closing right now. You know, I told you that I knew that got a new granddaughter who was born just the other day. And when a woman is pregnant, her hormones begin to change. Her, her feet begin to swell. She begins to have pain in her body. You know, I've got enough daughters that I've, I've seen this happen several times. And when she gets close to delivering, the baby, the more intense the pain comes. And when she goes into labor, she's screaming and hollering because she, she wants relief. As the pain begins to intensify, the more she expresses herself. And she begins to say all manner of evil against everybody that's in that room when she's getting ready to have that baby. Because she's trying to get out of her what's in her. But the only way to get the baby out of this is she has to push. And she has to go through the pain. And when she pushes her baby out and she holds that baby in her arms, the glory of that baby makes her forget all about the pain she just went through. I wish I had a witness today. Let, let me leave you with this tweetable. Let me leave you with this tweetable. Uh, the, the intensity of your pain is an indicator of the magnitude of the blessing that you're going to get from God. And if the pain is intensified, you ought to give God glory right now because you're coming into the greatest season of your life. Just remember that after this season, there will be glory. So it doesn't make sense to wait till it get here. You might as well give him praise right now. Is there anybody willing to praise him for what you've been through? Is there anybody willing to thank you for what you brought, he brought you out of? You ought to just praise him right now. You ought to praise him. You ought to lift him up. Because there's glory after this. Somebody say glory. There's glory after this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. What a wonderful word. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah.
lived his life, he gave his life, he died on the Calvary's cross just for you and I. But he didn't stay there. He got up early on the third day morning with all power in his hand. And just like he got up out of that grave, you can get up out of your situation according to that same power that works within us. Just receive Jesus Christ today. The Lord Jesus, I want you to come into my life. Lord Jesus, I want you to be Lord of my life. I believe that you died. I believe that you rose. And I do believe that you're coming back for your church. It is that simple. Hallelujah. We want to welcome you to the family of God. If you can pray this prayer and you would like to connect with Second Chance Church, just reach out to us on uh, Facebook or call the church. Come on, let's keep singing that church. Everybody, we're so glad. And we want to welcome you to the family of God. We're going home on this one. We're going to keep holding to God's unchanging hand. Come on, everybody.